my publication on Photo Researcher, Photograph Truths in Posing Narratives. This issue of Photo Researcher is a collaboration between myself and the European Society for the History of Photography that investigates uh, photographs manifestations under an array of different power structures at several locations um, around the world and points throughout the history of the medium of photography both inside and outside of the West. Each of the chosen investigators contributions to this special issue casts a light on nuanced photographic practices seen through the prism of the relational forces at play at the time and place of their respective photographs inception. So what motivated me to get involved with this project? While researching early Japanese photographic history, I found a lesser known source relating the importation of a daguerreotype camera to Nagasaki by a local merchant, Ueno Toshinojo, in 1848. This camera prompted Satsuma Domain's samurai lord and erudite scholar, Shimasu Nariakira, to commission his samurai retainers to research, develop, and produce the daguerreotype photographs independently from the West the following year in 1849. Up until then, what I knew about Japanese history, Japanese photographic history, concerned itself with the importation of photography or the introduction of photography to Japan much later, in 1853-54, during the gunboat diplomacy mission by U.S. Commodore Matthew Perry to force Japanese markets open to the rest of the world and force it out of self-imposed isolation. The photographic representation of events, people, and places matter. And it is thus imperative that we understand motivations of those doing the representing. It is important to examine the link between truth in photographs and the power relations between those represented and those doing the representing. And the images that emerge as constructed photographic narratives imposed by the creators of said images, editors, and their publishers. This example of Japanese history of photography uh, shows evidence that photography was in the hands of Japanese scholars and researchers long before it was brought by the power of the uh, U.S. Navy to the country. And so it opens the window to a new line of inquiry, in my mind, about how photography developed elsewhere, especially in cultures that are non-Western, and in cultures that wanted to remain isolated from the rest of the world. This has been driving my research for many, many years, and I felt that in Photo Researcher, we could explore how photography developed in other parts of the world at different points in time. On to the third point of my video testimonial. Why is this issue meaningful to my field? Well, please allow me to read from my uh, editorial essay. The development of photography is generally thought to have been fairly uniform around the world, and its technological evolution emerging largely out of Europe and North America. 
It is assumed its practices opened up to more people of lower technical and financial means than professional photographers into the 20th century. With such a simplistic perspective on photography's development, the singularity of photography's powerful influence on artistic, cultural, intellectual, and social frameworks outside the West tends to be uncomplicated. Conceding that Eurocentric perspectives on photography's development deserve systematic attention, investigation, and collection. These attitudes often relegate photography beyond the West to a secondary or tertiary rank. The power of Eurocentric hegemony was such that many colonized societies adopted photographic history views and violent photographic language prevalent in the Western halls of learning, commerce, and industry. Together, they coalesced to dismiss non-Western contributions to photography's development as curious expressions manifesting in inferior societies, unworthy of investigative rigor. My primary role in this exciting project is actually twofold. First, it's to provide a historical context for the medium's development in the 19th century and the initial assumptions that were made about its capabilities and limitations early on, which continue to influence the way in which we see photography today. It was thought that the medium was completely free from human interference as images were made by the rays of the sun itself. And for that reason, due to the long exposure times that early photographs required to be recorded, assumptions were made that the veracity, accuracy, and truthfulness of the medium was a given. This, of course, carries on to today, even though the capabilities of photography and its limitations have been greatly redu reduced. We can now make a photograph in fractions of a second as opposed to six days, or eight hours, or 25 minutes. The veracity, the truthfulness, and accuracy of photographs, therefore, comes into question as our ability to manipulate the medium has also exponentially increased as the capabilities of photography have increased over the last 175, 180 years. Number two is to provide a theoretical framework in which to discuss these aspects of photography. Primarily, uh, looking at the concepts that structured photography outside of the West and how those concepts inform local photographic practices. To give us a little bit of, of, of grounding, in a Western context, photography from its early days was understood as a means to take, to capture, to collect, to exert control over the visible world. In a scientific context, that also meant that it provided an objective form of truth capable of communicating key knowledge. For instance, what certain places looked like, what peoples looked like, and what certain events looked like. Why is this issue important to me and to our students. The truth is important to me. In a world continually manipulated by powerful economic and sociopolitical interests, our ability to discern and seek the truth is of greater critical importance than at any other time I, I feel. The power of photographic images to shape and influence uh, thought is undeniable. We seem to be much less likely to question photographic representation 
especially when it aligns with our preconceived notions of reality. Said notions are often inherited by us as opposed to independently developed through critical thinking. The ubiquity of photographic images in our day-to-day -day lives has increased exponentially, and spaces like social media have enabled us to create, edit, and publish photographs of people, places, and events to worldwide audiences almost as quickly as we can snap the photograph. Think foot pictures and how careful we are to photograph these delicious dishes to enhance their appeal to our friends in social media. We tend to accept photographic images as truth or truthful, and we use them increasingly in more aspects of our daily life. We know that photographic images are constructed to great effect to serve specific goals in advertising, entertainment, news, and social media. Think again, food pictures, right, on Instagram but also in political propaganda. Simultaneously, we are experiencing a critical decline in our society's ability to discern truth from fiction, at least in the public discourse. Terms like alternative facts and fake news and the post-truth era have permeated our public discussion and dialogues and behave as double-edged swords to either refute or support any argument that disagrees or that agrees with our preconceived notions. Perception is indeed much more important than reality in many of our social, social circles. And so, in this issue of Photo Researcher, by providing expert research on the where, when, how, and why photography has been and is used throughout the world since the mid-1800s, this publication becomes one more tool in the development of our students' critical thinking and in the service of the discernment of truth in photographic representation and the understanding of the powerful forces at play that inform and shape the images that we so eagerly consume. Again, thank you very much, Maxine, for this opportunity to record this video testimonial about Photo Researcher, special issue number 40, Photograph Truths, Imposing Narratives out now, uh, either available from me or from eshph.org. Thank you.